Hi dear students, in this presentation we will be discussing about Environment Impact Assessment simply known as EIA. Okay, it's a uh, very long topic so sometimes it, I may not be able to cover in one presentation if, if it is lengthier then I will be doing the remaining part in the next presentation. So what is Environmental Impact Assessment? It is a process of, process of predicting and evaluating the effect of a proposed activity bar project on the environment so environmental impact assessment as the name indicates it is predicting what will be the impact of a particular product or a project on the environment so it will be useful for protection of the environment optimum utilization of the resources and saving of time and cost of the project so these are all the end effect of the environmental impact assessment or simply by doing EIA uh, we are act, we, uh, the use, uh, it will be useful for if we do EAA it will be useful for protection of the environment and it will indirectly optimize the utilization of the resources or we can work with minimum resources and of course we will have saving as well as the uh, saving of cost as well as time for the project so properly conducted EAA also lesson, lessens conflict by promoting community participation information decision makers and helping lay the base for environmentally sound project so if you are properly conducting an EIA then uh, we can clarify the conflicts regarding a particular project or a product because in EIA processes uh, between two stages the active participation of the community common uh, people is there or citizen is there that's why the doubts in the minds of the people can be cleared by conducting EIA and, as, and also uh, experts are also participating in this one and even the design changes is proposed, everything is proposed so that the nature can be uh, conserved. So since all are participated, the conflicts can be avoided. The proposes measures to mitigate adverse effect of projects. So it will uh, minimize the effect of the uh, environmental impact by a particular product or processes so by doing EAA we can minimize of course there will be slight uh, some effect will be there on the environment by every product or project but by doing EAA we can minimize or mitigate means lagu garika that is the meaning of mitigate so we can somehow reduce the effect of environmental impact by a particular product all new development projects have to submit their EIA reports to the environmental ministry of the country to get environmental or green clearance to commence the construction. So now it has made mandatory that every development project uh, before starting they have to submit the environmental impact uh, report to EIA uh, sorry uh, report to environmental ministry of the country once they get the clear clean certificate or we will call it as green clearance then only they can start the project okay so it is a uh, very lengthy processes and it is a very difficult process also a lot of uh, clerical works are coming they have to uh, starting from the purpose of the product they have to mention the what is the purpose of the product how it is being made so everything they have to clear then they will study about what are the impact going to be on and en on environment if and in between stages they will design uh, steps to uh, minimize the effect of impact of this particular product on the environment everything is being done so finally uh, in a most appropriate manner only we can start the project that is the purpose of environmental impact assessment so we have to get the clearance certificate from the ministry that is the ultimate aim so and ministry of environmental ministry is the authority who is providing this environmental impact assessment certificate or clean, clean green clearance certificate so once we get this certificate then only we can start our uh, proposal project to our kind of okay what is the purpose of EIA to allow government officials business leaders and all concerned citizen to understand the likely environmental consequence of the proposed actions and to cooperate in making wise decisions that restore and maintain the quality of our shared environment to future generation. That is the purpose of the environmental impact assessment. So, 
simply it means the purpose means uh, by doing environmental impact assessment all the common even the common citizens or all the people are uh, made aware of what will be the environmental impact of this particular project if it is uh, coming in a particular area what will what what effect this product or project will make on the environment uh, they will make they will be making aware of all the consequences of this particular project on the environment to the common people so by publishing environmental impact assessment so i have already told eia will be published before the erection of the project before starting the project they will be providing the environmental uh, impact assessment certificate in that everything will be clearly uh, mentioned so as a report in that report uh, clear mentioning about what would be the consequences of this particular product on the environment how it will be affecting them everything will be clearly mentioned so even the common people if you go through that report they can understand what will be the effect of this product on the environment if anything extra is there they can uh, point out and they can have the objection and that is what is being done in between stages see eaa is a eaa not eaa is not a uh, not a process which is happening by few authorities or few 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 people are not doing this one so active participation from the uh, people from all the side will be there in this particular process so in between stages itself discussions were there so they can clarify their uh, doubts and all in that stage itself so by doing eaa all the people will come aware of uh, the environmental effect of this particular project if it is it has diverse uh, adverse effect on the environment then definitely uh, the permission will not be there to start that particular project so that is the purpose of environmental impact assessment so ultimately what will be the purpose ultimately to protect our environment that is the final purpose so that is mentioned in the last sentence and to cooperate in making wise decision that is for and maintain the quality of our air environment for future generations so ultimately our aim is to uh, maintain our environment with less effect to the future generations so they also have the right that is sustainability now immediate objectives of environmental impact assessment these are the immediate effects of Uh, immediate objectives of environmental impact assessment first one is improve the environmental design uh, of the proposal so uh, the company will be setting up a proposal so by doing eaa there will uh, there will be definitely there will be improvement in the environmental design so designs will be changing so that it will have less effect on the environment that is the first immediate objective second one check the environmental acceptability of the proposal compared to the capacity of the site and the receiving environment so we will have a check uh, whether it is acceptable to the environment uh, if it is adversely affecting the environment there is no permission as i have already told so whether it is practically possible or not that is uh, another immediate objectives then comes ensure that resources are used appropriately and efficiently so by doing eaa uh, this condition is satisfied and shows eaa ensures that resources are used appropriately and efficiently identify the appropriate measures for mitigating the potential impacts of the proposal so if any if by doing eaa if we find that there is a adverse effect on the environment so of course we will go for the alternative options so how we can uh, reduce that effect so by redesigning and all we will be reducing the effect on the environment that is what is mitigating lego verica okay so identify appropriate measures for mitigating the potential impact of the proposal so if any uh, adverse effect is there on the environment then uh, alternative options are introduced to reduce the effect on the environment that is the uh, another immediate objective then comes finally fa- facilitate informed decision making including uh, setting the environmental terms and conditions for implementing the proposal so finally setting the environmental terms and conditions is the final step so these are all the immediate objectives of environmental impact assessment now coming to the long term objective of eaa uh, the main long term objective is to avoid irreversible changes and serious damage to the environment ultimately uh, to protect our environment that is the main objective then comes safeguard valuable resources natural areas and ecosystem components so of course resources are for the future also so we have to conserve it that is the next long term objective uh, then comes enhance the social aspects of proposal and finally 
perfect protect human health and safety that is these four are, are the long term objectives of the environmental impact assessment now coming to the history of the eia eia as a mandatory regulatory procedure so originated in the early 1970s in us it started first in us in 1970s uh, then other countries like canada australia new zealand followed this in 1973 74 time Developing countries like Colombia started in 1974, Philippines in 1978 also introduced this one. Coming to India, uh, sorry, that in, that we will discuss in the next slide. In 1989, the World Bank adopted EIA for major development projects. Uh, World Bank uh, made it mandatory that if if they uh, they are providing the fund, EIA is mandatory It's for the uh, project under World Bank to get the financial aid from the World Bank. If a project has to get the uh, help or financial aid from the world bank they have to sub clear the eia certification so in 1983 only world bank made this as mandatory for major development projects in which borrower country had to undertake an eia under the bank supervision so then only they will get the financial aid that is uh, regarding the history world history coming to india eia in india the government of india introduced eia in 1994 see uh, in world uh, it started in early 1970s but we are into that one on in 1994 only under the environmental protection act 1986 so actually it is uh, environmental protection act 1986 draft copy was on 1986 but implementation was in later stages only so in 1994 uh, eia is included under this one new eia legislation was introduced in 2006 uh it was not legally binding till then see in uh, 1994 itself we have started an eia procedures and all so whatever project is implemented in our country they have to get the clearance from the uh, ministry that is uh, in from 1994 onwards but it was no not legally uh, binded uh, it has made legally binded in by the introdu- introduction of eia legislation in 2006 only since eia 2006 the various developmental project depending on the uh, threshold capacity and likely pollution and likely pollution potential requiring prior environmental clearance from ministry of environment and forest or the concerned state environmental impact assessment authorities so once this one eia 2060 is uh, implemented so every project which is depending on the environment has to get clearance from ministry of environment forest or concerned state environment impact assessment authorities that has made mandatory in india also by eia 2016 the project component is responsible for the preparation of the eia statement sorry the project proponent so who is uh, implementing that project that is what is project proponent so they are responsible for the preparation of the environmental impact assessment statement with the help of external consultant or institution so of course uh, we'll have the consultancies with the help, help of the consultancies who is going to implement the project will prepare the environmental impact assessment statement and will submit to the concerned authority state environmental impact assessment authority or ministry of environment and forest in 2020 the government of india proposed a new eia 2020 draft see uh, uh, now recently in government of india has proposed a new environmental impact assessment draft it, it is in the draft form only not came into picture so for the implementing the same it will take few years also okay so that is all about the history of eia in india now coming to the various processes happening in the environmental impact assessment the processes we will discuss uh, here uh, and what are happening in in between stages that we will discuss in the next presentation that will better i think because it's a uh, if we discuss everything in one presentation it will be very lengthy so coming to the environmental impact assessment processes first step is the proposal identification so first the uh, project proposal is being made and will be submitting to the authority of the company itself or who is uh, doing that project they will prepare the project proposal identification proposal identification means or project varan povunnengil adine pettiyulla etum basic aayilla irangal proposal identification nu parayunnathu okay then comes screening uh, first proposal identification is done then comes screening i will explain what is coming on in between stages e screening il endana cheyyana proposal identification endana nadakkunnathu adakke in detailed aayi step by step aayi discuss uh, explain cheyyu anyway this is the various steps involved first one is proposal identification then comes screening after screening uh, 
initial environmental examination is being done so after once we do initial environmental ex examination uh, we will be categorizing this one that particular project submitted into different categories high risk category low, low risk category like that so if it is in low risk categories to the environment then there is no uh, requirement of environmental impact assessment certification so uh, by initial environmental examination we will uh, categorize whether eia is required or not so if no eia is required then uh, they can directly start their um, project and all but if eia is required then further detailed checking is required so if the project submitted is coming under the environmental uh, threatening category or the risk risk is very high by implementing uh, the effect of the and effect on the environment is very high by introducing a particular project then that will be coming as high risk category in that for that environmental impact assessment is required so if it is eia required then then only uh, then going to the next step if eia is not required the process uh, process comes to an end there itself and the company can start the project okay if eia is required then comes the scoping next stage is scoping uh, in that stage we will have a public involvement public involvement is happening in the initial stage that is first stage that is scoping so in the scoping stage we will have a public interaction so in this stage we will have an idea about uh, we will be discussing with the public and all uh, what is the purpose of this particular project and uh, what will be the environmental impact of this project on the what will be the environmental impact of this everything is discussed even minute uh, things are being discussed in this stage that is scoping then comes impact analysis so after scoping uh, the next step is impact analysis that is being prepared by the expert i have already told if can, we can uh, get the help from the consultancies for doing this one impact analysis uh, once the impact analysis is done we will have the now we will have a clear idea about uh, what are the uh, adverse effect going to be on the environment how now we will think about if uh, something can be done we will think about if anything can be done to reduce this one so that is the next step next step that is mitigation and impact management so we will uh, introduce various plans or various or even we will change the designs so as to reduce the effect on the environment that is what is the next step mitigation and impact management uh, once all these are uh, once impact analysis is done we have identified what are the negative effects on the environment and we have uh, obtained the solution we have found out the solutions for this ne negative effect so as so as uh, we are assuring that there is no effect on the no bad effect on the environment so then we will submit it as a report that is what is called eia report so once we submit that report then the report will go to the review so the report will be published published uh, everywhere and anyone uh, can study about this report and if anything is not mentioned or uh, something this is missed out can be pointed out so in that stage also uh, public involvement will be there so i have told the in, in the scoping stage the public involvement is the next stage uh, having the public involvement is in the review stage so uh, once the review is completed then is, then next one is the decision making so uh, of course two decision will be there uh, as way, whether we will approve it or not to approve that is the decision making so decision making is done by the concerned authority so they will if if everything is okay the authority will approve that one that is implementation follow up once the approval is got then uh, the uh, company can move move further forward they can they can start the implementation and follow up if the not approved means uh, either they can go for the redesign or they can drop the project that is the next step if uh, if they are dropping uh, the eia process will be and will become an end there otherwise uh, the company who is implementing that project will go for the redesign and they will resubmit and everything is to be followed uh, as usual from the starting stage itself that is the uh, various steps or uh, various steps that is happening in a environmental impact assessment processes okay so in between steps what is happening i will discuss in the next presentation so in proposal identification what is happening see proposal identification is the first stage uh, then comes uh, screening what is happening in screening 
everything i will discuss in detail in the next presentation okay thank you